Welcome to Beyond Film School, where I tell you all about the film industry. I'm Amber, and in this video, we're talking about the top tips for first-time ADs, assistant directors. Before we jump into the top tips for first time ADs, I just wanna say a big hello to my loyal subscribers. Thank you for supporting Beyond Film School and what I do. And for anyone that is new to my channel, welcome. I'm happy to have you join the Beyond Film School family. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the videos I make on the film industry. This video is like for the next level for those folks who have experience as a set PA, they've been in the game for a hot minute and they're looking to kind of take the next step in the AD ladder, in the AD track. If you're watching this video, welcome to the dark side. And I'm assuming that you know what an assistant director does. And if not, whew, you need to go back to my AD playlist. I have a playlist all about the assistant directors and what all of them do. This is for those people that are definitely on the AD track. Or you could be a producer type just trying to figure out what a good AD does, and in which case, you're smart. Makes your hiring process a little bit easier when you know what to look for. Being an assistant director is not easy. There's a lot of pressure and when things go wrong, you are hearing it from all sides. The producers, the director, the crew, and even the cast. When you decide to take the leap and you do your first day, you get your first day as an assistant director, holy hell, you're gonna be nervous. You will be nervous. I know I definitely was. So this is why my first tip, <laughs> my top tip, my number one tip right now is to stay calm and relaxed. Just relax, be confident, and let all your film set experience lead the way for you. Like literally take a breath. Breathe, breathe, breathe. You're running that set, know that. That is your set, you are running that set and people are going to follow your lead. Everyone around you on set, cast, crew, they're gonna take on the vibe that you have, the vibe that you're giving off. And don't worry, you are going to get that camera rolling soon. My second tip here is when you start being an AD, when you start ADing, do not take on a project that is super complicated or very, very long. You do not want to get in over your head and this will happen and this will set you up for failure and I do not want that for you. So start on the simple end, start with like a one day short film and then work your way up to longer projects and more complicated elements that are implemented in those longer projects. If you take on a very complicated project, you will drown. <laughs> you will drown very quickly on set and then your AD career will end before it really has a chance to begin and we don't want that. Like I said, start with a one day short film or maybe a music video your friend is shooting or something with not many cast members, like maybe there's just two, maybe three at the most if you're just starting out. You don't wanna have a lot of elements to take care of and to organize when you're first starting out as an AD. You wanna progressively work your way up. My first AD gig, um, I was a first AD, uh, actually the only AD on this project. It was a two day short film. It was a friend of mine they shot it on the weekend, um, very low stakes. So it was something that I was very nervous about, but something I could handle at the same time. And yes, I was not paid and I'm not ashamed of that because I felt like he was giving me a great opportunity and took the pressure off me a little bit because I felt as if, if I were paid, I might have had felt more pressure on me, but he was getting me for free, so he was gonna get whatever he got for me. Even though I wasn't paid, it was a great opportunity because it was my first AD day and that's what I wanted to do. It was the first step in my AD indie career that I wanted to take and I knew I needed that line on my resume and would lead to more and more things. So yes, I wasn't paid, but I was on the weekend. It didn't really cost me anything, but a couple of days out in the forest, somewhere in the Catskills, somewhere, <laughs> you know, it gave me the experience I needed and I got through my first day. Hell, I felt like I should have paid him for this opportunity. That's how grateful I was for it. Like, I should have definitely paid him for it. So start smaller. It's way more manageable when it's coming to your first couple of days as an AD. Start smaller. 
My next one is know your way around a call sheet. Now there are different types of call sheets for different types of projects. So for example, a commercial call sheet is going to look different than a movie or short film project call sheet. So just keep that in mind, know your call sheets. Um, when you're a set PA, you are given call sheets, study those call sheets, take those call sheets that you are given as a set PA and look at them and figure out what each box is doing because there's gonna come a time when you're an AD that you're gonna be making those call sheets. Learn them and get comfy with them because they're your new best friends now. Best friends, best friends. And to make those call sheets, you are going to be using Excel. So very useful to learn Excel while you can, before you even get to making call sheets, learn the program. And some people I've heard, uh, some ADs like to use Photoshop to make call sheets, which I think is pure insanity, but I mean, whatever floats your boat, whatever gets the call sheet done. Other types of paperwork to get familiar with when you start getting into more complex productions are the day out of days called the, the dudes or the BG breakdown, the script breakdown, the one liner schedule, all those things are what ADs deal with. So get comfortable knowing those documents and look them up, research them and know what they are. So this is an exhibit G. This is a document that has all the times for the actors when they're in and out basically how long they're working, and that goes to SAG, the Actors Union, and then we have, we have a lovely call sheet here, pretty call sheet. Then I have a camper breakdown, um, second ADs make those, and then I follow it as a base camp D, and then these are the, this is what a day out of days looks like. Um, basically, you have an actor's name on the side, dates on the top, and then what, what the status is of them. And then this is a one-liner. This is what a one-liner looks like. We have like, what scenes we're shooting, what day. Sometimes they have locations on them. Sometimes they have approximate call. This one is blue because it's a revise. So every time you revise something, it changes color. So that might you know seem a little complicated, but when you see a blue one, that means it's been revised. And this is also a different type of shooting schedule as well, where it's like, this is more of a, um, a breakdown of what each scene will have, where it is, what actors are used. It is a, it's a shooting schedule, but it's a little bit more detailed. It has like more details on it. So that is a glimpse of all of the paperwork that an AD deals with. If you need a call sheet template, I will leave the link to one of those below for you. When you are an AD, you are the one that info comes from. People are asking you a ton of questions and you are gonna have all the answers and you're gonna be repeating those answers a lot. Share all the info you can as often as you can with all the cast and crew. The more everyone knows, the better. And with changes that happen throughout the day, make sure you keep everyone updated on those changes. So many problems can be avoided if you're just sharing all the info all the time as much as you can. Less confusion will occur on set if you share all the information as often as possible with everyone. Which leads me right into my next one. Make sure that you have a nice working relationship and communication with your director and your director of photography. The three of you together make things happen. If you see the director and the director of photography off away talking with each other, always, always, always insert yourself into that conversation. You always wanna know what they are discussing. Man, when they start deciding stuff, you wanna make sure that it's actually feasible and possible for it to happen. So don't let them decide things without your input. It's honestly going to be a tough shoot if you do not get on well with your DP or your director. You wanna make sure that there's good communication between the three of you, because when there is good communication between the three of you, then the crew can work more efficiently. This also applies with having good communication in a relationship with your producers and your crew because the crew is going to be coming to you with concerns or issue and you are going to be bringing that back to the UPM and the producers. So you basically have to have good communication between everybody, everyone on set. There's all types of triangles and stuff, but you gotta have good communication with your director and DP and good communication with your producers, UPM and the crew. You're gonna be talking a lot to a lot of people. Which takes me to my next tip, number six. Make sure you listen to your crew. Listen to them, listen to the crew. Hear them out. They may be uh, wanting to discuss a safety concern. They might just need to vent really quick. Either way, listen to them. You just listen to me? Listen to this! Give the crew the respect they deserve. Don't bark orders at them and making sure you're giving them the play-by-play -play of the day. 
If you take care of them, you take care of your crew, they work harder for you to get your day done. Do whatever you can to save time to give everyone a shorter day. Shorter days equals a happy crew. And try your damnedest to make sure you are breaking on time at the six hour mark. Man, that seems very, very simple and probably a little dumb, but it goes a real long way. I mentioned this briefly before, but for the love of God, do not be a screamer, AD. No one likes it. Like, talking at high volumes is one thing, but screaming at people is completely another, and no one likes that. And no one's gonna like you, and I, I mean, already, ADs are not well liked because of the, the, the nature of the job, but honestly, do not be a screamer, AD. It doesn't make anything better. Don't be an asshole. Gotcha. It is possible to be an efficient AD and not have to yell everything. There are better ways to motivate a crew. Now, don't get me wrong, there are gonna be some instances where you are gonna have to raise your voice or yell, and this might be in a huge warehouse where maybe we're outside and maybe there's a plane going by. In that instance, you wanna make sure you stop for the plane to pass because why strain your voice while the plane's going by? Speaking of planes going by, it's different when you are in a room full of people and you're trying to make an announcement to make sure everyone hears you versus, you know, screaming at camera operators and to do XYZ in a small room. I may talk loudly, but I'm not gonna scream and yell like a toddler. No, and in anyone's face, definitely not. Another tip I have for you is to talk to other ADs, talk to other assistant directors. I've worked on a bunch of stuff where I was the only AD, I was a department of one, and it's tough when you're on your own and you're in that position by yourself on set. I was a one woman army, I was doing prep, I did the schedule, I made the call sheets, I got the cast ready, I ran the set, I was doing the PRs, and sometimes I had no PAs. It can be a lot of work, and I just found talking to other ADs so helpful. Mainly sometimes just to commiserate, or sometimes ask for advice, or see what they would have done differently in certain scenarios that I encountered on set. Definitely talk to other ADs, it is so helpful if you can. Like, definitely talk to other ADs out there. My ninth tip for my aspiring ADs out there, Read leadership books and listen to podcasts that deal with leadership. Trust me on this. I really do mean this. It may sound silly, but trust me. You are the leader on set, and the sooner you realize that, the better. And when you start functioning as a better leader or just a leader in general, knowing that you are a leader on set, you will start to see how things flow a little bit easier for you on set. This one I really, really like. It is really short. It is called The Hero Code. Um, very, very quick read, but I love it because it really addresses leadership and, and like the, the values of a leader that go into it. Very, very good read and um, pretty cheap. I think it's like six or seven bucks I got from like Barnes and Nobles, but I'm sure you can find it on Amazon. I'll leave that link below for you. And while we're talking about books, since you are an aspiring AD, you need this book. It's called Running the Show. I believe there's a second edition. This is the first edition <laughs> for so long now, but there's a second edition out. It's by Liz Gill. Definitely cannot express how helpful this book is for people who are trying to be assistant directors. Running the show, very, very good stuff in here. Um, really, this is like the AD Bible. Like, this is like, this is it. <laughs> like, this is, this is what you gotta get if you wanna be an AD. Or at least a better AD to know what you're doing on set, like, and why you're there, and what you should be doing, for that matter. So I will definitely leave the links to these books below for you. They are Amazon affiliate links, so they are not gonna cost you extra. Um, the, the, I will just get a commission on whatever you buy, which helps me out, and you'll be helping support Beyond Film School, which is amazing. So yeah, check out these books. If you're an aspiring AD, you can't go wrong, honestly. Let me know in the comments how you felt about these tips for first-time AD. Ideas. If uh, you found anything enlightening, let me know. I know a lot of these things I experienced when I was first starting out and I wish I knew when I was first becoming an AD. Um, and I can't stress enough, talking to other ADs is probably the number one thing because when you're an AD and you're like the only one on a small project, you kind of feel a little like isolated and alone in a weird way. So talking to other ADs is so, so helpful. Um, all of those things I learned the hard way. So hopefully you learned from me and 
and my experience. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all the videos I make on the film industry. And if you are looking for more film career resources, please visit my website at beyondfilmschool.com. I got a lot of stuff going on there. There's resume resources for your film production resume. I have set PA classes online, in person. Uh, I have blog posts. I have a bunch of stuff to help you go forward in your film career. And if you want to know what I'm up to on set, follow me on Instagram at Beyond Film School. I'm always posting stories of what I'm doing on set uh, so hit me up there to see what I'm up to on set and if you want tag me in your post because I would love to see what you guys are up to on set as well so thank you so much for watching that is it for now and I shall see you next time